Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In front of me today I have the Hobonichi Techo for the year 2021. I did an unboxing of this in a previous video and if you follow Astro Boy you can watch that. In that video I said that I was going to be using this but not as a planner but as a creative journal. Very briefly, the reason why I want to do a creative journal is because I have another journal. It's more of like a long form journal. I can easily write paragraphs and paragraphs of journaling at a time. It's also in a plain notebook. I've realized that a lot of those entries are more for me to get my thoughts out of my head. They could be rants, they could be negative, they could be positive. But I wanted a separate space outside of that where I could put some of my kind of creative outlet into the pages of the journal. That one is more of just like a brain dump. I did try to merge those two things together. I tried to paint in there, but I realized that I want something separate. So this is where this comes in. I'm hoping that this will give me a bit of a challenge to be able to use this planner with all of the structure to it, with all of the dates so that I can sort of be more creative and make myself be more creative every day. You can see here, there are monthly calendars. There are these trackers here at the front. Then we get into the weeklies. There's a weekly view for every week. And we get to a dailies. There's lots of structure here. I'm, I am inspired by a lot of people that I've seen whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or other social media. But recently I stopped watching those because I think when I start this, I want to be able to do things my way and not really be influenced so much by others because my own style is probably going to be different from others. And I don't want to kind of look at those and compare and kind of feel inadequate. Hopefully that makes sense. One day I'll probably go back and then look through those videos or look at the new videos for more inspiration but for now I just don't want to watch those. In any case this is for the year 2021. The daily pages start on January 1st. I, I wanted to start doing this before January 1st 2021 and so that's where this comes in. I was on Facebook one day and I saw a link to a website. The website is called Laura Lai Lee's Plan Bar and the, the lady who runs it, Lorelai, she offers these free planner printables. One of those printables is a dated planner printable for 2020. And the layout of that planner is almost exactly the same as the Hobonichi Cousin. So I downloaded that free printable. That, that printable was meant to be used in a ring binder. You could print it out on the A5 page and you could hole punch it and put it in a binder. But I decided instead to put it into a booklet like this. Now, on the day that I'm filming, it's November 14th, which is a Saturday. There's about one and a half months left in 2020. So when I printed this out, I decided just to start from that point and just kind of ignore the first part or most of 2020, which is why this is rather thin. I also printed it on Tomoe River paper so that it would kind of match the paper that's used in the Hobonichi Cousin. Now, I will say... Learning how to print something into a booklet format instead of just like a loose leaf ring binder format was pretty challenging. This is the second time I've tried to print a booklet like this and I hate both times that I've done it. This one is especially challenging because it uses Tomoe River paper, which when you use it with my printer, it tends to jam. I could go on forever about my printer issues, but I'll spare you that. I'll just go through this and I'll try to compare it to the cousin. First we get to the first page, which is just a plain dot grid. So I'm going to just decorate it, probably put something like journal, the start date and the end date, which is what I do for most of my journals. And then we get into the monthlies. It's got a sidebar, it's got a Monday start, Sunday end. And by the way, the person who runs the website also has a YouTube channel. I did quickly go into it and look through some of her videos to see how she used this. It is in German, but you can just kind of watch the video and figure out what she's doing. So it's a pretty useful video and I'll link it down below. So back to this, let me compare this monthly layout to that of the Hobonichi Cousin. Now there's not enough space for me to put both side by side, so you can't really see, but maybe I'll just do it like this. 
So I think the layout is quite the same. Even the width of each day of the week is the same and the sidebar. You kind of line it up like that. It is the same width. This does have some shaded parts for the weekend, but this one doesn't. And either way, it doesn't really bother me. The Hobonichi Cousin has a square grid, whereas this one has a dot grid. And they have a dot grid throughout the planner, whereas this one has a square grid throughout the planner. I did measure the dot grid here, and I think it is 3.7 millimeters wide, which is the same grid spacing as that of the Cousin. It's both very minimal, which I like. In this case, the height of each one of these monthly boxes is taller than that of the Cousin. If you notice here, this is November. There's November 30th here on a Monday, and the box here is really small, and it's squeezed down here at the bottom. It also makes the 23rd, which is the day above it, also a smaller box. Whereas you compare the Hobonichi Cousin layout, you can see that the box here is all the same height as the rest of the month, only the last one here is shorter. Whereas this one is shorter, and this one is also short. I hope you can see the difference. There's also a little bit more space here at the bottom where you can put some decoration or something like that. So it's not a big deal. I would prefer all of them to be the same height, but because this is, again, it's more of a creative journal, I would dare say it's a memory keeper as well. It doesn't really matter. I also have the December monthly, and then we get into the weeklies. It's a week on two pages. I did put in, even though today is the 14th and I don't want to backdate anything, I did put in most of November, except I did skip out the 1st of November, which would have been on a previous page. I just deleted that part and then printed it out. That's mainly because I have to have a certain number of pages in this insert, and that's how it ended up being like. But today being the 14th, I'll try to start on the 14th. And then just leave these blank. Back to this layout. At the top, there's these three boxes here at the top with a dot grid throughout the entire spread. And I guess that's a place for you to put your daily priorities if you were using this as a planner. Then there's a timeline going all the way down. It starts at 6 a.m. and it goes to midnight, which is an 18 hour period. Now let me flip to the same spread on the Hobonichi Cousin. It's very similar. The widths of the, the each of the weekly columns are about the same as the ones in the cousin. Same with the sidebar. And then also on the sidebar, there is a little mini calendar here with the certain with the week that we're in highlighted. Now these, now these are different months and different weeks, but same thing. The timeline in the cousin is different. It starts at 5 a.m. and it goes to 4 a.m., which is a full 24 hours, whereas this one is 16 hours. But then they also have this extra space here for a bit of notes. So it's up to you. Now, if I were to use this as a creative journal, I would probably just ignore the entire timeline here and the entire timeline here. Now we flip from the weeklies into the dailies, and it goes straight to the dailies. I'll compare this to the cousin. At the cousin, the first page of the month, there is a blank page, and it says February, first of, well, for the beginning of February, and you can write down whatever you like here. If you were using it as a planner, you could write down the goals for that particular month, or whatever, or whatever spread that you want that's relevant to the month. Now this one doesn't have one, but if you were to look at the original printable with the entire month, then it does. So because again, I'm using this as a booklet and I need a certain number of pages, I had to remove it. But if you flip to the end of November, this 29th and the 30th, then when you print out the PDF from the free planner printable, you do get a blank page of a dot grid. Instead of blank here, this is a dot grid, but it's still blank, and that's sandwiched in between the month. So this one I did leave here, and so it's just pretty much the same thing as this. 
Now we'll get back to a daily page. So I'll flip to another daily spread here so we can compare. This one has a dot grid throughout the whole page. And then it has the month, the day of the week, and then the day of the month. On the right here, there are these five check boxes which you can write perhaps some to-do lists for the day. And then there's a box here. I saw on the Laura Liley's YouTube channel that she put the weather here. It's a good spot to put the weather. And then there's the timeline. Timeline goes from 5 a.m. to midnight. I think that's the same timeline as the weekly. Alright, so the weekly timeline actually goes from 6 a.m. to midnight, whereas this one goes from 5 a.m. to midnight. So there's an extra hour. And also the space in between the times is a little bit different. Again, since I'll be using this as a journal, I won't really use, I won't really look into the timeline. Now we'll go to compare this to the cousin. It's similar to, I think the day of the week and the month are more, it's smaller and it's less obtrusive, I suppose, as opposed to this one where it stands out more. It does have five check boxes here on the left, which is the same as this. And it also has a timeline. Now the timeline here goes from 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. So it's not exactly 24 hours. Unlike the weekly, which does go 24 hours. So that's strange. This one does have a little quote at the bottom, which is not in the free planner printable. So that gives this one more space. And then on this one, there's this kind of faint line going down the middle of the page, which follows the same outline of the timeline. So the idea is if you use that line, you can write stuff here on the left for the timeline of your day. And then on the right side, you can write notes or other tasks. That is if you were to use it as a planner. This one does not have that faint line. But because this is a dot grid, what I've noticed here is there's a blank space in between this part and this part. It's kind of like making two columns without a line going down the middle. But it's just a blank space. So there is a separation here between the timeline and the notes part. It's just harder to see. I think I like this more because you don't need to see a line going down, even though it's very faint. So here I printed out all of the daily pages for November from the 14th to the 30th. We have that blank page, and then we get into December 1st, and it goes all the way to the 31st, and that's the end of the insert. Whereas, of course, this one is a more full-featured planner, so once you get to the end of the dailies, now because of this is the Avec version, it only goes to June, and then there's another book for the rest of the year. But this planner also has other stuff like graph paper, other spreads that you can fill in, and other reference material. So this one has more stuff, this one doesn't. So I'm excited to use this, see how I like the format, see if I can keep up with the format. And then hopefully if I get used to this, then by the time I get to 2021, then this will be a good place for me to start. Just some notes about using this, making this insert. As I was saying before, I did use Tomoe River paper. And since this is the C5 size, that's pretty easy. I have these A4 loose leaf papers, Tomori River. So you print on it and then you fold it into two. And once you fold it into two, it's exactly the same height and width as an A5. This has 72 pages for the one and a half months and it uses 18 sheets of this paper. I hope you enjoyed this brief comparison of the Laura Liley's um, printable planner insert. I believe she calls this the A5 Fomonichi. If you check out her website, you can get ones for 2020 and 2021, and I think previous years as well. But anyway, I'm very grateful for her for making these printables for me to use. And I don't know how much I'm going to share of this, if at all, uh, on this channel, because if I do use it for journaling and I have some memories in here, some personal details, then I don't want to share those out. But if it might be, some of it might be for just doing basic art, uh, doing a little bit creative, trying my hand at doodling. If, the, if that happens, then maybe I'll try and share some of that. If not, 
that may be the last you'll see of this. And it may be the last you'll see of this too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.